When I run a speed test now of a Mac Studio, I'm getting over two gigabits download and upload speeds thanks to my fiber internet. I'm gonna explain how I got here, everything from my ISP to my network switch and Wi-Fi routers and the ethernet cable actually ran in the wall when we built the house. And I've learned a lot about one gigabit versus 10 gigabit SFP plus ports, I had no idea what that was, and why we're still a long way from seeing these kinds of speeds over Wi-Fi here in the house. So step one, let me start with the computer. I have a Mac Studio, it's the M1 Max version, it's almost a couple years old now, but it has a 10 gigabit ethernet port. That means it supports up to 10 gigabit speeds over that ethernet cable. If you're ISP or you have internet that offers faster than gigabit service, then you're gonna want that kind of ethernet port. Definitely look at the tech specs and configurator as you buy new Macs or any computer. The Mac Studio comes with a 10 gigabit ethernet port standard, but other Macs like the Mac Mini, it depends on your configuration. It might have a one gigabit ethernet port or 10 gigabit. The iMac, as it stands right now, we might get a new iMac literally tonight as I record this video at the Scary Fast Apple event. But the current M1 iMac only offers one gigabit ethernet, even on the highest models. And other devices like the Apple TV, gigabit only. So you'll never see over gigabit speeds on any of those Apple devices. So if you ever wanna get these speeds on a MacBook Pro, then you'll need a USB-C or Thunderbolt dock or adapter that offers those kinds of 10 gigabit speeds. I'll put a couple links down in the video description to hubs that would work with this. Now working backwards from my Mac Studio, it has a Cat6 ethernet cable and it's running here in my studio all the way to a closet where I have all of my networking equipment. Now I actually ran all the ethernet in this house myself. We were building this house from scratch. I had the ability to run it. And a huge regret of mine is not having run way more ethernet cable. I'll get to that in a second. Cat6 Ethernet cable should carry up to 10 gigabit speeds at 180 feet runs or less. Now I went with Cat6 because I could terminate the ends myself and Cat7 and higher cables, they just get super complicated and not as cost effective. Again, it all depends how much you wanna future proof it, but Cat6 has worked out for me and clearly I'm getting these speeds. And all the ethernet cable in the house is running to a closet where I have the main hub of my internet. That's the Ubiquiti Unify Dream Machine SE. I originally got this because all in one, it has eight ethernet ports, several of them power over ethernet, which I use for the Wi-Fi access points. My Wi-Fi network is also the Unify Wi-Fi 6 long range access points, and they've been working great. But I'll get to Wi-Fi in a second because I'm not getting anywhere near these speeds on Wi-Fi. Now the Dream Machine SE has been great, but I also came to realize when upgrading my internet that the eight ports where I have everything plugged into only support up to one gigabit speeds. So I'll never get two gigs over that. But thanks to several podcast listeners and commenters in these videos, I learned that the two ports on the far right side are SFP plus ports and support up to 10 gigabits per second speed. Now this is a special connector. You can't plug a normal ethernet cable into these big ports, but you can get these adapters. I got this, it's about $40 on Amazon. Ubiquiti sells their own models as well. And this actually plugs into that SFP plus port and gives you then an ethernet jack on the outside. I took the ethernet that was going from my Mac studio to this closet from one of those eight ports, put it into this adapter, and now I'm getting over two gigabit speeds here in the studio, it's pretty cool. Now long-term, if I wanna get faster than one gigabit speeds to my access points or other devices, I'm gonna have to get a switch that supports multiple 2.5 or 10 gigabit speeds from the jacks. I'm actually eyeing this switch from Ubiquiti Unify it offers eight ports, two and a half gigabit speeds, and it has two of those SFP plus ports. So I basically go from my dream machine to this switch, and now I have eight ports that are capable of over two gigabit speeds. And in case you're wondering, the dream machine SE ethernet is going into a frontier fiber to ethernet little converter, and frontier where I am here in central Florida now offers up to five gigabit per second service. I just did the two gigabits, one because of all the hardware I would have to upgrade to actually take advantage of five gigabits, and Wi-Fi again, as I'll get to, is nowhere near that. Now, when it comes to access points, I have the Wi-Fi 6 long range access points. And what I also discovered is that these access points only have one gigabit ethernet service on the actual device. So if I ever wanted to get faster than one gigabit speeds to this access point and then to my Wi-Fi devices, I'm gonna have to upgrade these. Now, Unify sells an enterprise model that actually has a two and a half gigabit port and Wi-Fi 6E. Now from what I've seen, Wi-Fi 6E supports speeds up to like 17 or 1800, and my iPhone 15 Pro and other devices like the M2 iPad Pro actually support Wi-Fi 6E right now. So I could get over gigabit speeds over Wi-Fi if I upgraded these access points. In order to do that, I would need to get the $500 switch plus these $280 access points, and I have two in the house I would wanna replace. 
I'm just not ready to do that yet. I want to play around with the speeds here on my Mac Studio before I invest all that. I also am inclined to wait for Wi-Fi 7. There are a couple Wi-Fi 7 routers out there, like from Eero, but of course no Apple devices support Wi-Fi 7 right now. Maybe I'll wait, upgrade then. Let me know what I should do in the comments if you have thoughts. Any network experts out there, maybe you're already working with Wi-Fi 7. I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Now let me share some Ethernet regret with you. I got to run Ethernet as much as I wanted here in the house before the drywall went up. I actually have a whole video on my process of that and building this as a smart home. Check out that video above or the links in the description. I ran two here to the studio. I ran it to all the Apple TVs I knew I would be setting up and a couple places just as extra runs. As I now realize, you will always want more Ethernet run in more places. We actually have a bedroom here that I never thought would really need Ethernet. Then now there's an Apple TV in there playing lots of content. I wish I'd run Ethernet there. My Sonos system is a huge pain point. I love my Sonos system, it sounds great, but I have found that the Sonos Arc and Sonos Beam and home theater setups, their connectivity is just way more reliable when they are hardwired to Ethernet as opposed to on your Wi-Fi network. I had a Sonos Beam, Sub Mini, and two Aero 300s in a bedroom. A little overkill, but sounds pretty good. And I just found that they constantly disconnected from the Sonos app. It would show the question mark that it couldn't find devices. Really frustrating. Now I did have an ethernet cable behind that TV. It was going directly into my Apple TV. So I got an unmanaged, inexpensive switch on Amazon, gave that Sonos Beam an ethernet connection, and now my experience has been vastly better. I have not had any dropped connectivity in the past week. I just wish I had ethernet run for every Sonos device in the house, including my Sub Gen 3 and my Sub Mini. I just wish I had run so much more. So if you're ever in a position where you get to run as much ethernet as you want in a home or in a business, Run it everywhere, run it twice as much as you need to, even more so, you will never regret having run more ethernet. And one place you might not think to run it is actually to an exterior wall or outside. I actually have an Eve outdoor camera. I have a whole video on my favorite HomeKit outdoor accessories. Check out that video above or in the description. And that camera is right on the edge of my Wi-Fi network and it will often drop connectivity for periods of time and then come back on, just because it's right on the edge. Now I did run an ethernet cable to an exterior wall. I actually just have to punch it through the soffit, put an access point out there, but having an access point outside facing your backyard will solve so many issues, especially if you want cameras out there running on Wi-Fi, HomeKit secure video like this Eve outdoor cam, it would be great to have that kind of Wi-Fi connectivity there. Now, what will I do with these speeds? Well, I work with a lot of 4K video. I upload 4K video all the time to YouTube and to cloud services for collaboration and sharing. And uploading and downloading speeds this fast, it's really nice. Uploading a few gigabyte video file to Dropbox takes under 30 seconds now, sometimes even under 20 seconds, both uploading or downloading. And if I take the time to upload a 35 gigabyte file to YouTube 4K video, it does it in under 20 minutes, which is pretty wild. Now that might not seem mission critical, but sometimes I upload a video to YouTube and I'll notice there was actually a mistake. And so I have to replace it real quick. Well, it's nice to have these kinds of upload speeds. Now the experience will vary when it comes to other websites. If you want to download a movie from Netflix or Disney Plus or even Apple TV, the speed there on the download will also depend on the CDN or content delivery network of that other website. So even though I have two gigabit speeds, that doesn't mean it's going to download super fast. It does download quickly for sure. And it's great, but you're not going to see consistent, super fast speeds everywhere. It depends on the website, depends on the service, but for my needs and uploading 4k videos and using lots of cloud services and doing lots of podcast recordings, especially remotely, it's nice just to never have to think about bandwidth. And when I want to upload or download something, it happens super fast. If you have any more questions on this setup, leave a comment below this video. I am no network expert by any means, but I've learned a little bit about SFP plus and Ethernet jacks and all of that. Leave your questions below. And if there's any network experts out there, Wi-Fi 7, thoughts on that. And before you go, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, have videos on setting up shortcuts for your new iPhone 15 Pro and the action button. You can check out one of those videos here. And YouTube thinks you will love this second video down here. Maybe you should check it out. You'll probably love it.